the migratory pattern. Plate 13. Illustrates a perfect threefold pattern established by the migration of the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan land in the greater and more perfect tabernacle, the universe, which Yahweh Elohim himself built and not the man Moses. In the outer court is Egypt, where the Israelites were in bondage to Pharaoh, the typical man of sin, having the mark of the beast. After Yahweh Elohim had poured out nine plagues upon the Egyptians, he, Elohim, instituted the first Passover with Israel, and simultaneously with the pouring out of the tenth and last plague, in which the firstborn of all the Egyptians were slain when the angel of Yahweh passed over Egypt. The slaying of the Paschal Lamb in Egypt is comparable to the sacrifice slain on the altar in the pattern of the tabernacle. The slaying of the Paschal Lamb and sprinkling of the blood of the Lamb on the side doorposts and over the lintel of the door and the blood in the basin was figurative to Yahshua the Messiah. Our Passover, the Lamb of Yahweh, nailed to the cross, with nails in his hands, a crown of thorns on his head, and nails in his feet. As it was night in Egypt when the Passover lamb was slain, likewise it turned dark over the face of the earth when Yahshua was on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. After the slaying of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh let the Israelites go, but afterward he pursued them to the Red Sea. The Red Sea is compared to the brazen laver in the pattern of the tabernacle and to Joseph's new tomb in which Yahshua was laid. The records reveal that Elohim, by the phenomenal cloud in the hand of Moses, brought the Israelites through the miraculously divided waters of the Red Sea, immersing or baptizing them in the cloud and in the sea, overthrowing the pursuing Pharaoh, the typical beast man of sin, and his host therein, Psalms 136 and 15. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. This baptism in the cloud in the Red Sea is compared to the priests washing in the brazen laver, and Yahshua being buried or baptized in Joseph's new tomb. Judas, the beast man of sin, having committed suicide and buried in the potter's field, is compared to Pharaoh, who was drowned and buried in the Red Sea. Three days after the slaying of the Paschal Lamb, the Israelites came into, or were resurrected, into the wilderness or holy place, just as the priests entered into the sanctuary or holy place, and as Yahshua raised from the dead three days after his crucifixion. The wilderness of Sinai, represents the holy place in the migratory pattern. Herein, the Israelites received the manna from heaven and then the Ten Commandment law and the divine pattern of the tabernacle. During the total time of their sojourn therein, they were led by a phenomenal cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, while they were being tempted of the devil forty years, one day for a year. Numbers 14 and 34. After the number of days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. The wilderness was comparable to the holy place of the pattern of the tabernacle, where the priests performed the daily services of Yahweh. The children of Israel being baptized in the Red Sea and tarrying in the wilderness for 40 years is also comparable to Yahshua tarrying in the wilderness of Judea for 40 days following his baptism after which he was tempted of the devil and after his resurrection from the dead. After Yahshua the Messiah appeared to his disciples in incorporeal form, he tarried on the earth for 40 days before he ascended through the second veil and ascended into heaven. The dividing of the River Jordan, or second veil, permitting the Israelites to pass over into Canaan land led by Joshua or Yahshua, 
served as a division between the wilderness and Canaan land, just as the veil divided the holy place and the most holy place. The veil is also shown in plate 31 by the removal of the flesh of Yahshua, being sown a natural body and being raised a spiritual. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul and the last man Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is Yahweh from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. This was proven by the rending of the veil in the temple when the Messiah rose from the dead. The promised land of Canaan is a type of heaven where David was anointed king of Israel and sat upon his throne in the city of Jerusalem. Canaan land is compared to the most holy place in the pattern of the tabernacle where the presence of Yahweh appeared in the cloud above the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant between the cherubims, representing the throne of Yahweh. Also, comparable to the promised land of Canaan, is the ascension of the Messiah, with the Messiah sitting upon the throne of Yahweh in the heavenly Jerusalem, being mighty ruler and king of kings. 1 Timothy 6.15 Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings and ruler of rulers. Revelation 17 and 14. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is ruler of rulers and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful.